The story of the Horizon franchise is a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. There's dense lore, a multitude of important characters, and plenty of earth-shattering revelations. And I mean that last point literally. And while the franchise is only really just getting started, we've had more than enough happen just across a single game in its DLC expansion to warrant a story refresher. So whether you played the original on release in 2017, or you're just jumping in for Forbidden West, let's break down the story so far. The Horizon franchise plays out its grand narrative of tribal politics and robot dino animal things in the 31st century in the wake of a cataclysmic robot apocalypse that has wiped out the majority of humanity. Those that have survived have formed tribes, and are living their lives largely devoid of the technological advancements of their predecessors, who are widely known as the Old Ones. Horizon Zero Dawn features four of these tribes. The Nora, deeply religious warrior hunters from the south, who worship at the altar of All Mother, a mystical mountain, the Karja, who reside in the bustling cities of the central deserts and revere the sun god, the Osaram, a tribe of practically minded forge men and women, and the Banuk, who are a mountain dwelling tribe of hunters and shaman. The tribes aren't exactly all on friendly terms either, with the Karja being notorious for raiding their rivals under the leadership of the mad sun king Joran. Scattered across the stunning post-apocalyptic landscapes are animal and dinosaur-like robots known as machines, who for the most part peacefully coexist with the tribes. However, as the years pass by, the machines have become increasingly more violent towards humanity, as part of a phenomenon known as the derangement. So begins Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn starts with the franchise's central protagonist, Aloy, as a cute little baby. Found alone in the heart of a sacred Nora mountain, the aforementioned All Mother, poor little Aloy is shunned from the Nora tribe for not having a mother and is subsequently raised by her surrogate father Rost, who is also a Nora outcast. Fast forward about five or six years and little Aloy stumbles into a cave system that was once a base of operations for the Old Ones. It's here where she discovers a magic little trinket known as a Focus, a tiny little earpiece that shows her visions of the Old Ones and vital information about the machines and the surrounding world. She puts it to the test by saving this unlucky Nora lad from a sticky end at the hands of some Striders, which are horse-like machines. Stumbling upon the Focus piques Aloy's interest into her own past, where she came from, and more importantly, who her mother is. She bombards Rost with questions about who she is, and he eventually tells her that the only way she can learn about her roots is by winning at the Proving, a Nora tradition which sees young men and women compete in trials. If she wins, she'll be granted any wish, including being reintegrated into the Nora, where she can start to find out more about herself. Of course, Rost tells her that it will take years of training to be ready for the Proving, so better cue a montage. As Aloy comes of age, she makes her way to the Proving with Rost, who tells her that she'll never be able to see him again once she wins at the trials. For your sake, I must go where you will never find me. After their sad farewell, Aloy makes her way into the town of Mother's Heart, where a pre-Proving celebration is taking place. A host of delegates from the Karja tribe are also in town, bringing with them good news. The Mad Sun King is dead, killed at the hands of his own son, Avad, who wants to apologise, you know, for all the murdering and pillaging his people have been doing over the years. Before she hunkers down for the night, Aloy strikes up a conversation with Olin, a Karja tribesman who's also sporting a focus. Olin shiftily excuses himself before a big, brash Osaram lad called Erend introduces himself and invites Aloy to come and hang out with him in Meridian, the bustling Karjan metropolis. He's a little forward, our errand, but don't worry, he's a good lad, you'll see. The next day, the proving kicks off, and despite some heinous acts of sabotage from her competitors, Aloy manages to win. But just as the winner's ceremony is coming to a close, a tribe of cultist thugs known as the Eclipse crash the party, bringing down death and destruction on the young competitors. Aloy fights back, killing a whole bunch of the cult and pocketing one of their focuses in the process. Many of the young Nora warriors are killed though, and just as Aloy is about to join them, Rost swings on by and saves her before the whole mountaintop is consumed by a giant fireball, taking poor Rost with it. R.I.P. Rost, we hardly knew you. Aloy wakes up in the heart of a mountain sanctuary where she unearths some unsettling truths about her past from the Eclipse Focus. Namely that she has a near identical DNA match with an unknown woman that could be her mother. When she speaks to Tirsa, one of the Nora High matriarchs, she's told that the woman can't be her mother, because she has no mother. 
You were not born of a woman, Aloy. The mountain is your mother. Tirsa elaborates on this maddeningly cryptic message by telling Aloy that she was found in the mountain next to their goddess, the Allmother, which turns out to be a great big metallic door. But this isn't a goddess. Aloy! It's a door. The door immediately starts talking to Aloy like they're old mates, but due to some form of corruption, she can't gain access to the secrets behind it. To rid the door of corruption, Aloy plots to follow Olin's trail back to Meridian, which means that she'll need to venture outside the borders of the Nora tribe. To allow her to leave, Tirsa and the other matriarchs bestow Aloy with the honour of Seeker. No, not that kind of Seeker. As a Seeker, Aloy is allowed to come and go as she pleases, to explore the world beyond the sacred land of the Nora and even the ruins of the Old Ones, a feat that would normally get you outcast. And with questions to answer and mysteries to unravel, Aloy sets off for the Karja capital. Just as she's about to leave though, she's attacked by a Corruptor, a scorpion-like machine that is turning other machines totally rabid. Aloy makes short work of the abomination and rifling through the remains, finds a little doodad, which is a technical term, that she bolts onto her spear, which allows her to override the machines. Aloy journeys west and catches back up with her old pal, Erend, who takes her to Olin's house to pick up his trail and get some answers. The trail leads Aloy to a dig site in the desert where Olin is helping the Eclipse unearth more Corruptors to wage war and reclaim Meridian from the new Sun King. You see, it turns out that the Eclipse are a splinter group of the Karja, led by this pasty looking lad called Helis, and they worship a metal demon known as Hades, more on him slash it later, and they've been blackmailing poor Olin to help them with their nefarious plans to regain power. The Eclipse also want Aloy dead because she looks like the woman that she DNA matched with, a trivial fact that came about because Olin found a picture of the woman at a place called Maker's End. Before she ventures to Maker's End though, Aloy assists Erend in uncovering the details behind who murdered his sister Ursa. Using her focus, Aloy detects foul play at Ursa's murder scene. I suspect foul play is my terrible southern accent, I'm really sorry. It turns out the body in the Meridian Morgue is not Eren's sister. Dun dun dun! And after a quick conflab with His Majesty the Sun King Avad, Aloy and Eren are sent after an Osiram terrorist known as Derval, who's thought to be behind the deception. The pair track down Ursa's captors to the mountains in the north, where they discover Eren's sister shackled and near death. After a brief reunion between brother and sister, Ursa succumbs to her wounds. In the makeshift prison, the pair discover a plot to blow up Meridian, so they hightail it back to the capital. There, they find a warehouse of highly flammable green blaze, think Game of Thrones' wildfire, and foil Duval's plans to destroy the city. Only that's half the plan, as Aloy tracks the terrorist to the throne of Avad, where she foils an assassination attempt on the king's life. And with that little side adventure sewn up, she begins her journey north to Maker's End. En route to Maker's End, Aloy starts to hear a mysterious voice in her head, a voice that guides her and helps her towards her goal of infiltrating the facility that she finds. Aloy discovers that Maker's End is actually Faro Automated Solutions, a manufacturing plant designed to build huge military machines that can help nations keep the peace. The scientists behind this endeavour are Dr. Ted Faro and Dr. Elizabeth Sobek, Aloy's mysterious doppelganger and they've built these machines with AI so smart that they can replicate themselves. The catch though, is that they need living matter to be able to replicate, which is the biggest red flag you can think of. I mean, why would you build that? Come on, does the Terminator franchise not exist in this world or what? To absolutely no one's surprise, there's a malfunction with the AI, which sends the terrible sentient robots on the path towards an all-you-can-eat buffet of planet Earth, which Aloy learns is what happened 1,000 years prior. After learning about all this doom and gloom, Aloy finally meets the man behind the mysterious voice, who turns out to be a guy called Silence, played by the absolute legend that is Lance Reddick. Do you really have no idea how monumental are the discoveries you just made, Aloy? And while she's initially hesitant to team up with him, Aloy eventually agrees to work with Silence, as he seems to have a lot of the answers that she's searching for. Silence, who's keen to uncover more info surrounding the Old Ones, sends Aloy on a mission to sneak her way into another Old World ruin. She sneaks underneath the Eclipse stronghold of Sunfall and enters the ruin, which turns out to be the base of operations for something known as Project Zero Dawn. But what exactly is Project Zero Dawn? Well first, the bad news. Turns out the Old Ones knew they were doomed and never planned to save themselves from the impending robo-apocalypse. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons program and it will not save us. 
nothing will save us. The good news though, they instead sought to set in motion the ability to rebuild the Earth in the post-apocalypse. To this end, a team of scientists led by Dr. Sobek created an AI known as Gaia, who they would engineer with the required knowledge and power to deactivate Faro's all-consuming murder bots and revive the decimated husk of Earth. Gaia would create an ecosystem of machines in order to revive the planet, before growing a new race of humans to populate her rebuilt world. The team broke Gaia down into nine subsystems that were all designed to do different things. Among them was Apollo, a huge directory of all human history and culture, which was designed to give the new humans a head start in the old technological rat race. But there was also a program known as Hades, one and the same as the metal demon the Eclipse are in league with, which it turns out is a failsafe software designed to wipe the slate clean if Gaia was to ever screw everything up. Deep within the Zero Dawn ruins, Aloy makes her way into the long vacant office of Dr. Sobek, where she finds the key that will allow her to bypass the corruption she encountered at the All Mother door. But just as she's about to leave, she's ambushed by Helis and his Eclipse goons and knocked unconscious. Aloy awakes in a cage in the Colosseum-like arena at Sunfall, where she is pitted against a horde of machines and corruptors as a blood sacrifice. Just as it looks like she's got her work cut out for her, she's rescued by Silence in a proper fist pumping the air moment. God, I love Lance Reddick. After her near-death experience, Aloy ventures back to the Nora tribal lands, where she encounters the Eclipse soldiers who have already started to invade. Aloy makes it through the invading troops, helping the Nora tribe to fight back in the process, before she gains access to the Allmother. After making it through that big metallic door goddess, Aloy discovers that the ruin is another base of Gaia. Allmother, it turns out, is in fact a facility designed to rebuild and repopulate humanity. There, Aloy learns that an unknown signal triggered Hades to kickstart his doomsday protocol and take complete control of Gaia. To stop this, Gaia ultimately made the call to self-destruct her core AI, and in the process blows up half a mountain, and more importantly, terminates all the ongoing terraforming processes on planet Earth. But even more of a bombshell, unless you saw it coming from a mile off, is that Aloy is actually a clone of the good Dr. Sobek. Gaia's plan for Aloy was for her to restore her AI programs and destroy Hades. Only the Nora tribe kind of got in the way of that plan and, well, if it weren't for Aloy stumbling into that cave by blind luck, none of this would have happened. But maybe that's just me being cynical. With the weight of all that new information on her shoulders, Aloy heads north to visit the decimated remains of Gaia, and lo and behold, there are yet more bombshells waiting for her to discover. First is the tragic ending of her new sort of mum, Dr. Sobek who Aloy learns sacrificed herself to protect Gaia's location from the plague of Faro's murder bots. Secondly, that Ted Faro, who by now is in pole position for the role of world's greatest shit, sabotaged the Apollo program, thus eradicating all of the key information designed to teach the next generation of humans. But hey, at least he probably got rid of Twitter in the process. And NFTs. It's like it's, like it's been erased. Erased from existence. And consequently, this is the chief reason why the current crop of humanity has regressed to tribal societies. And thirdly, once Aloy has attained a master override from Gaia's remains, which will delete Hades forever, she comes face to face with Silence for the last time. Turns out that he's the founder of the Eclipse, as he's the lad who discovered the wreck of Hades, and half the reason why everyone's in this mess in the first place. Damn, this game likes to keep dropping big bombshells. Why are you telling me this now? Because your success depends on knowing this. Silence isn't entirely a bad egg though. He's figured out what Hades' ultimate plan is, which he shares with Aloy, telling her that the rogue AI is prepping a signal to revive all of Faro's old murder bots, which are lying dormant under the earth. On top of that, Helis and the Eclipse are preparing to launch an attack on Meridian, where they seek to gain access to the giant spire tower that is located there, a tower that is perfect for broadcasting Hades' signal. Aloy hightails it back to Meridian to warn anyone and everyone that matters, and with the help of Erend and the Sun King of Ad, she's able to muster up the support needed to set up defences against the incoming army of Eclipse soldiers and corrupted bots. Depending on how many side quests you completed along the way, Aloy is joined by any allies that she has made, and with their help, she overcomes and kills Helis before defending Meridian from the horde of deadly machines. 
Despite their best efforts, Hades is still able to break through, and after nearly being crushed to death, Aloy pursues the rotten AI to the bottom of the spire, where she drives a lance straight into the egotistical robot, ending his nonsense for good. Horizon Zero Dawn comes to a close with Aloy making a pilgrimage to the final resting place of her sort of mum, Dr. Sobek, where she honours the memory of the woman who pretty much single-handedly saved humanity. What a top lass. But wait, there's one of those sneaky little post credit stings that shows that Hades isn't actually dead, as we see a glowing orb of red light rising from his metallic corpse and flying off into the horizon, to be snared by none other than our old mate Silens, who traps the AI in some kind of lantern. Hello, old friend. Remember me. We've still so much to discuss. Okay, so technically the Frozen Wilds actually takes place before the final fight that goes down at Meridian at the end of Zero Dawn, but I've included it here because if I'd have chatted about it earlier, it would have completely derailed my recap of the main story of Zero Dawn. And besides, I found it a little weird that when I returned to Zero Dawn right before that final battle, Aloy had an opportunity to go and explore a whole new region and get stuck into a whole new side adventure, despite knowing about the impending end of the world. But maybe that's just me. Anyways, the Frozen Wilds takes Aloy to the far mountains in the north, to a post-apocalyptic Montana and the remains of the Yellowstone National Park, a place now known as the Cut. There, Aloy encounters the Banuk tribe who are battling a daemon that hails from a mountain known as Thunder's Drum, and is causing the machines to go mad. After an unsuccessful attempt to destroy the daemon, the tribe shaman, Araya, has disappeared, and with Aloy unable to investigate the disturbance without the blessing of the shaman, she heads off in pursuit of Araya. She eventually finds Araya in a mountaintop satellite facility, which has been transformed into a Banuk shrine, and the pair agree to work together after Aloy is able to make contact with an AI spirit that the Banuk revere. Due to Banuk tribal laws, before they can travel to Thunder's Drum, Aloy must challenge the chieftain, Araya's brother Aratak, and replace him as the head of the tribe. Bit of a ballsy move for an outsider. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Long story short, Aloy beats Aratak at the challenge by gaining his trust when they are ambushed by Frostclaws, giant bear-like machines that belch ice, and she is proclaimed chieftain. Aloy and Araya head to Thunder's Drum and infiltrate another old world ruin, where they learn the Banuk spirit is actually an AI called Cyan, whose sole responsibility is to make sure the Yellowstone National Park doesn't explode from, you know, all the tectonic activity going on. It's also revealed that the daemon is in fact another subsystem of Gaia known as Hephaestus, a subsystem designed solely to build more machines. Aloy and Araya battle through Hephaestus' corruption, before Araya sacrifices herself in order for them to destroy the facility. Aloy makes it out with Aratak, and Cyan reveals to them that Hephaestus is still alive, but in hiding. Aloy relinquishes control of the Banuk tribe back to Aratak, and ventures back to Meridian to crack on with saving the world. But, as you know, we've already covered that. And with that, bring on Horizon Forbidden West. Thanks so much for watching this story recap of the Horizon franchise. I hope you enjoyed it, and are, like me, looking forward to seeing where the story goes next.